bed at night, is the bedroom door open or closed? According to National Fire Protection, Protection Association, seven people die in house fires every day, and 50% of those fires happen between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. One thing that could be the difference between life or death is a closed door. Joining us is Captain Eric Scott. He's a Los Angeles City Fire Public Information Officer. Welcome, sir. Good, Good to morning. See. Good to have Thank you. Good here. morning. Um, most of us, I guess, assume that you know if you have the open door, it's it's easier to escape if if there's a fire. But you have a, a campaign that's called "Close Before You Doze." What do you mean? Yeah, you're right. Uh, and as you mentioned, half the fires happen at night when you're asleep. And so the research has really shown just having a simple barrier of your door being closed between the fire and where you are dramatically increases your chance of survival. It'll oh. stop the flame, really mm. the deadly smoke, because you know fire burns, smoke kills. Mm -hmm. Also the carbon monoxide that would mm. come through. And it takes it down from a thousand degrees in a well-involved fire room to 100 degrees behind just your normal door. See, wow. I would think if the door is closed, you don't know what's good. Let's say a fire starts elsewhere in the house. Right. If it's open, you're aware. Maybe you'd smell it or hear it, but you're saying that's not the case. Yeah, and we understand those thoughts and concerns, or it's hot out, right? right. And you want, you want a nice air. breeze yeah. coming through. Sure. But that breeze is just going to push those fires. You're not actually you're going to be able to smell it and wake up, and really you want to have a smoke alarm to audibly exactly. wake you up. So there's some video that we want to show folks to demonstrate the difference between an open or a closed bedroom door as we watch the video tell us about smoke and fire and how a closed door is a barrier for several reasons right right so you see here the, um, the firefighter research uh, institute has done an amazing job uh, they built a simulated home here that mm -hmm. has multiple bedrooms as you see what they had is a candle that fell over on a couch it mm -hmm. started to burn you see that um, smoke and flame go through and here you could dramatically see the difference on the left you have a room that looks untouched, right? You yeah. have white walls compared to the black charred room there. And that is just simply by closing your door oh, wow. at night. So that barrier can really protect you and your family. And obviously, if you have smoke detectors, in theory, they go off and alert you. You don't need the smoke and the fire to alert you that you have a fire in your house. Right. Um, the, the amount of time to escape Mm -hmm. uh, the house that that time has dramatically decreased. What is the average time to get out of your house when it's on fire? Um, in 40 years ago, you used to have 17 minutes. Mm. So that's in 1979. You want to guess how many minutes you have now to get out? Five. Ten. Three minutes. Wow. Three, wow. Three minutes. That's it's different. because of building construction are really synthetic material. Mm. So it drives home the point that you don't have that time. Have that smoke alarm to get you the early detection. Put it on every level outside and inside every sleeping area. We have an, an escape plan mm -hmm. so you know where you're going to go. And if that escape gets cut off, how else you're going to get out. Mm. And then close the door behind you to compartmentalize that fire. Or if you can't get out, we've seen uh, multiple times where people are trapped close that door, put towels underneath to keep the smoke out, tell firefighters where you are, wow. we'll come save you. Mm. What are some other tips that, that people should know? Because I think you're right, I don't know if a lot of families have really talked it through, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't want to think about something like that happening, but your kids need to know what to do, you need to know what to do. What are some tips that we all need? Well, I think we mentioned, that we could talk for an hour on the topic. Yeah. I'd say your three big ones are going to be having that functional smoke alarm in, mm -hmm. in each home, having that escape plan. The one thing people tend to forget that we actually see sometimes you have individuals they run out at night disoriented and they're running around their house trying to find the whole family mm. sometimes they run back inside right so have a meeting point a and then remember to close your doors at night before you go to bed or if you get trapped that's a great barrier between you all right uh, you have a contest uh, for clothes before you doze uh, tell us about that and how do people enter yeah, it's a great contest. We're now we're engaging the community to be a part of this public education. So they could create their own video, three minutes or less, and you share that the, the topics we're talking about of closing your door and smoke alarms and escape plans. And then um, what's going to happen is eight individuals will be picked, mm -hmm. and then they're going to put uh, money towards their chosen fire department, the grand winner with $25,000. So you could submit uh, your videos until the end of the month, and in the beginning of September, the first couple of weeks is when the public will be able to choose one. So feel free to get involved, share that information with your community. Terrific. Really great. Yeah, to learn more about the Close Before You Doze video contest or home fire safety tips, go to closeyourdoor.org. Thank you to Captain Eric for coming in this morning.